here at UBC as part of an ambitious project involving instructors, students, staff, and talking squirrels, we are developing videos to help you with your writing skills, because communicating science effectively is an incredibly important part of being a good scientist. It is always important to write with clarity when writing about science. Two tips are to use simple language and succinct sentences. A third is to ensure linked elements within each sentence are written in parallel form. Writing in parallel form means using the same pattern of words when two or more things have the same level of importance. This same pattern means using the same tense. It applies to words, sentences, clauses, and lists so that they all look and sound similar in form. But why does any of this matter? Well, when linked elements are written in parallel form, everything flows smoothly. But when they aren't, things can get really messy and really confusing. So, how do you know whether you've written something in parallel form? We're going to give you some top tips that will help you answer this question about your own writing. But first, to help you visualize why it's important to write in parallel form, we're going to look at a couple of examples. Note how the following example doesn't look quite right. Try reading it aloud too. It sounds a bit clunky, right? And now note how this version looks much cleaner. If you read it aloud, you'll hear the clunkiness disappear. You might have spotted the conjunction AND in these examples. This is a coordinating conjunction, which is typically used to join two simple sentences together. Here's another example of a non-parallel sentence. It isn't parallel because the tense is different and because the word endings look and sound different as well. However, if Grammar Score had instead written it like this, it would have been in parallel form and, consequently, it would have looked and sounded much better. Note the conjunctions AND, BUT, and BECAUSE in both versions of that last example. The BUT is another coordinating conjunction. The BECAUSE, on the other hand, is a subordinating conjunction, which is used to join two independent clauses into one complex sentence. It is called subordinating because the latter part of the sentence that it joins to the former part is dependent on that first part for it to make sense. After doing some research, Grammar Squirrel has come up with the following examples of some common coordinating and subordinating conjunctions. If you check your writing, you'll find these and others throughout. Whether using a coordinating or subordinating conjunction, it's important to check for non-parallel writing when editing your work. But how do you do this, and where do you start? Well, initially, you should find all sentences that include coordinating conjunctions, and then look closely at the words either side. Our first tip is to read these elements out loud. Do they sound similar? If not, you probably have a problem. Our second tip is to list these elements in a column. Do they look the same? Again, if not, you probably have a problem. In which case, you need to rewrite your sentence until that problem goes away. Now for some practical examples set in a slightly impractical scenario. Grammar Squirrel has just completed an experiment in which she compared the nut preferences and gathering habits of North American grey squirrels in eastern and western populations. 
She wrote up the results and discussion parts of her lab report, and one day on, she's about to check to make sure she's written everything in parallel form. In this first example, she wrote, Squirrels from the eastern population said they prefer nuts that will be easy to gnaw, split, and be carried. What do you think? Is this in parallel form? Listen to the linked words and list them in a column if you need to. No, that's not right. But this sounds and looks much better. In this next example, she wrote, Western squirrels, when talking about hunting for nuts, said it was important they slept deeply the night before, prepared fully, and that the right equipment was readied in advance. What do you think? Is this in parallel form? Listen to the linked words and list them in a column if you need to. No, that's not right. But this sounds and looks much better. In this example, she wrote, One subject said she only likes baking acorn cookies with newly collected nuts because she prefers eating freshly prepared food. What do you think? Is this in parallel form? Listen to the linked words and list them in a column if you need to. Yes, that sounds and looks right. Notice how the tense and word endings look and sound similar, even though a subordinating conjunction appears in this one. In this last example, she wrote, We can use studies like this for assessing nut gathering techniques, monitoring nut preferences, nut recipe counts, considering peer influences. What do you think? Is this in parallel form? These words are in a list, but are they still linked in some way? Well, the list doesn't sound right, so let's see if we can rewrite it and make it sound smoother. Yes, that's much better. Lists should still be written in parallel form, just like sentences and clauses. To recap, writing in parallel form will help you write more clearly. Checking your writing for errors requires you to first find sentences that include conjunctions, especially coordinating conjunctions, and then focus on the linked elements around them. Say these words out loud and list them in a column. They should sound and look similar. If they don't, make sure you change them so that they do.